Hi, everyone. Um, can you just give me one second, please? I'm so sorry. I just have to finish this message. It's super important. <laughs> How did that make you feel? Were you annoyed, offended, saddened? It's all right. Because it's an all too common experience these days, right? We want to listen to a friend or we want them to listen to us. But instead of connecting, they're distracted in favor of their device. Hi everyone, my name is Ilana Wynn. I'm 15 and I'm here to talk about teens, tech, and the antidote. Antidote, why do we need an antidote? Is technology a poison? Let's talk about this. I am a 10th grader at Stanford Online High School and being in an online school, my friends, yes, I have friends, exist <laughs> on a computer screen. Here's a picture of us doing a murder mystery birthday party online. And the interesting thing is, even though these people live thousands of miles away from me, I formed really strong connections with them that I haven't found in many other places. Uh, now to the tech. The fast development of technology, we've come a long way from 2007, has brought about many advantages of living in a connected world. And I feel that firsthand, as my friends live in other states, even other countries, and keeping in touch with them is as easy as pulling out my phone from my pocket. And digital tools offer an amazing community building platform. Think about something like hashtag me too, which is a unifying force to spread awareness on social media. These are the positive consequences of technology, and these are good things. But like anything, there can be unintended or intended negative consequences. That's the poison. Technology's ability of widespread instantaneous connection has opened the doorway to cyberbullying and negative exposure of all kinds, leading to anxiety, eating disorders, addiction, violence, child pornography, depression, and suicide. These are major problems, and I actually encounter them in my everyday life, and so we need an antidote. And the antidote starts with each and every one of us, and it must be done on two levels, individually and as a global community. The individual antidote lies in the quality of our connections, because the negative consequences of technology affects us all, but it is when we lack strong connections that the effects go much deeper. For example, when I only talked to people through texting, I was scared to meet them in person because I wasn't sure if they would like the real me as much as my online persona. And if this is widespread, anxiety and loneliness are sure to follow. Two out of five Americans say they feel their relationships are not meaningful, and one out of five say they feel lonely or socially isolated. And every younger generation is lonelier than the last. In 1985, most Americans reported having three confidants. Now most say they have none. Some experts are calling this the loneliness epidemic, and I feel it. The area where I live in Northern California, the 10-year rate of suicide for high schoolers is four to five times the national average. People are dying. My cohorts are dying. And someone might go, well, Ilana, these are new problems. But the truth is technology is amplifying the problem. In the words of Dr. Sherry Turkle, a sociologist and author of Alone Together, digital connections may offer us the illusion of companionship without the demands of friendship. We would rather text than talk. A common sight in my middle school was you'd walk in in the morning and we'd all be there on our phones, sending snap streaks, scrolling Instagram, ignoring each other, even though we we're standing right there together. So how is it that we're so connected and yet we feel our relationships are not meaningful and we suffer from social isolation? We must make the quality of our connections a priority again in our lives online and offline because it's not about our highlight reels or a perfect online persona. It's about human connection. I go to online school, so I should be the most vulnerable to social isolation, right? Personally, I think my school is pretty great. We have an awesome cafeteria. 
But the answer is no, I'm not lonely, even though my relationships are online. Because the time I spend together with my friends, we are truly present, just enjoying the moment and not thinking about what we're missing out on, so on social media or how we're going to document this moment for our followers to see. And this act of listening leads to a strong connection built on trust and just knowing that we'll have each other's backs no matter what. And on a global level, as we journey into the future and make new technology by the hour, we must face the responsibility that we have as the innovators and guardians of the future. The technology we are making reaches the entire world, so it is more important than ever that we listen to each other across perspectives, across race, gender, nationality, field of study. And it starts with diversity in the STEM fields, a cause that I am very passionate about as I teach workshops uh, to kids of underrepresented backgrounds who might not have had the exposure to STEM otherwise. And secondly, we must listen to each other across disciplines. We must listen to those in sociology, psychology, law, anthropology, ethics, philosophy. Taking a step back, having awareness and listening is the key. By listening, we can collaborate and take action. So listening and connecting. They're so simple, right? Don't we do it already? The thing is, we don't. We rarely have active listening and true connection in our personal lives because relationships get messy and they require vulnerability. And sometimes things get real and it gets awkward. But if we run to our devices every time things get real, we soon lose our most valuable means of combating the very problems technology is perpetuating. We must make meaningful interactions a priority again, and we must persevere in our relationships, not just ghosting somebody every time things get hard. Because it is through authenticity, conflict, and resolution that we grow, learn, and truly feel loved. And as a collective community, it is hard to hear criticism. It is hard to take into account all perspectives. It takes time and effort but it is through open conversation that technology, society, and humanity improves. So to those of us who are creating tech globally, I encourage us to continue to sit down with each other across perspectives and disciplines and include everyone in the decision-making process to make responsible technology for the world to enjoy. And in our personal lives, let's practice. Do you remember my friend from the beginning? Let's connect. Wasn't that easy? I truly believe that every single one of us has a story to tell and a perspective to share. So let us make meaningful connection with each other a priority again in the workplace, in the home, and most relevantly, in our online interactions. As we push the future forward, let's get back to the basics and make listening and connecting on the individual and global level a must-have. I'm young, sure, but I can dream. And I dream of a better world if only we make genuine connection with each other by listening with open hearts and open minds. We are the antidote. Thank you.